So here's a recent Jordan release that really wasn't on my radar at all. But before I get into why it wasn't, I figured we could get straight into the review. Starting with the box, it's just a standard black and red Air Jordan 1 box of recent years. Jumping to the size tag, I got these in my standard 9.5, which, while talking about it, they fit like any other Air Jordan 1. And if you don't have a pair, go true to size. Within the box label as well as the colorway, which is Baroque Brown, Racer Pink, and Black, and more notably referred to as the Tokyo Biohacks, or even just simply as the Biohack Air Jordan 1. Taking the sneakers out of the box, you can see there are certainly more than three colors on these, contrary to what the box lists. Offhand, a lot of people say this pair draws reference to the electricity and fast-paced environment of the Japanese city of Tokyo. Some also say these are loosely inspired by the collaboration pair of dunks between Nike and Undefeated from 2005, which you can also certainly see. I'm not sure what the materials were like on those dunks, but on this pair of ones is an all-over suede, which has a decent feel to it. It's not a high hair suede, rather a muted, matted type one instead. It does have a nice soft, buttery feel to it, and you do get that color change when you run your fingers through it, which is definitely nice. Starting with the colors that the box actually advertises, you get a glimpse of Baroque Brown at the heel counter and heel flaps. The heel flaps are unlike most Air Jordan 1s in that they're detached and aren't really bound to the sneaker unless you decide to lace up all the way to at least one of the three available lace holes. Moving underneath those heel flaps and towards the mid panels is a standard black. There is also a complementary black color at the standard Jordan 1 rubber outsole as well as the black set of laces. Nike's Hyper Pink color is the additional set of laces, which also matches the Hyper Pink at the inside lining of the sneaker, as well as the logos at the insole and Nike Air tongue tag. The insole is in this teal color, which is also found at the back heel accent, and the toe box. The color looks a lot like the aqua that you'd find with the Tiffany Dunk, which I actually went back and recently grabbed, but I'll make a separate video on that at some point. The stitching at the Nike Air Tag, which by the way is different from a traditional Air Jordan 1 tongue, utilizes the exposed stitch in that same teal. The exposed stitching too reminds me a lot of the details found on the Phantom Air Jordan 1 that I have. Underneath the tag is a laser orange colored nylon tongue with this deconstructed feel where you can see the exposed foam. When I mentioned just now that this tongue is different from other Air Jordan 1s, it's because of this exposed foam. Back to the various colors on the shoe is a navy blue, perhaps a midnight navy, at the eye stay, and around the toe cap. Resting underneath all of this is a neon green outsole that actually looks like it should glow in the dark, but doesn't unfortunately. That same bright neon hit can also be found behind the heel flaps. It isn't directly visible on first glance, but is indeed a nice added touch if you do see it. And then finally closing out the shoe is the silver Nike swoosh, which is in a standard smooth leather. The overall quality on this pair is pretty good for the $170 retail price. I never think Jordans are quite worth the high retail price, really ever, but in the case of the suede usage on here, these get a satisfactory pass for me. For being a non-OG colorway, I think it's one of the better ones. As far as wearability goes, it's pretty tough to pull off. I'd probably stick with wearing neutral colors and just letting the shoes do the talking. I do think, however, that this is an all-season sneaker in the sense that you could dress these with a brighter colored lace to wear in the summer, and then roll with something like a brown or black lace in the winter. With any Air Jordan 1, most are destined to be instant sellouts, but in some instances, there are pairs that don't quite make the splash that people expect. I thought that maybe these biohacks could flop, but actually the opposite, and they seem to have been an overall hit, and I'm not exactly sure why. Some people are even calling these the best Air Jordan 1 of the year, which I get as subjective, but to me that claim is a bit of a reach. And I'll be honest, this pair of biohacks just wasn't on my radar. Similar to the Royal Toes I picked up earlier this year, I figured I'd throw my hat in the ring and try to grab them on sneakers and a few raffles. And if I got them, cool. But if not, no worries. And after not hitting on anything, I was scrolling on Instagram and saw my local boutique was doing a first come first serve release and I made my way over there. 
Fortunately, I got there in time where there was only a small-ish line and was able to secure my nine and a half. And shout out to them, Hush Life Boutique in Anglewood, New Jersey. When I was in line though, the guy behind me was talking to me for a bit and he was like, yeah, I already secured three pairs and just looking to grab a few more. I get it's one thing if you're picking up any recent release and reselling and that's how you make your living. But then I guess I had this realization that people were actually trying hard to grab these. I'm usually pretty good at picking up things I like, yet I wasn't entirely sold on these. But I think these are an example of sneakers that you just need to have in hand, because it wasn't until I took these out of the box where I was like, okay, I could kinda see why these are sticking. Despite me being on the fence, I'm definitely gonna hang on to these. As we've seen with most ones, they tend to appreciate in value over time. I mentioned earlier some flopped Air Jordan ones, my Phantoms, New York City to Paris, and Fearless pairs were all initially bricks. But if you look at the resale on them now, a year or two after their initial release dates, it's actually absurd how much those climbed up. I'm not in the business of reselling, I'm a collector by nature, and when I pull this shoe out years down the road, I'm 100% going to think of that first come first serve experience I had. And really that's the whole point of sneakers to me, the storytelling. But that wraps it up for this video. Let me know what you think of the Biohack Air Jordan ones in the comments. Was this a must have for you? or could you live without it? Additionally, if you like the video and want more content like this, let me know by giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Be sure to follow me on Instagram as well, at StuffDylanLikes. I've been picking up some heat recently and that's the first place I go to share. That's a wrap for now though. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.